Chapter Twelve of Miss Pym's Camouflage. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Miss Pym's Camouflage by Lady Dorothy Stanley. Chapter Twelve. Weary, hungry, and sick at heart, Miss Pym found her way to the Hotel de France, the chief hotel in Valenciennes. She hoped to find some unoccupied room where she could sleep in a comfortable bed in comparative security. There was much coming and going, and some unusual bustle. In the largest room of the hotel, a long table was spread with fruit and flowers. Evidently a banquet was about to begin. The hotel proprietor, a haggard middle-aged man, was anxiously bowing to officers as they entered, and directing them to the salon. Curiosity led Miss Pym to follow them, and she found the banquet was to be given by Colonel von Schlange as a welcome to officers just arrived from the Eastern Front. Too weary to linger, Miss Pym now explored the bedrooms on every floor. The rooms were evidently all engaged. Miss Pym wondered where she could find rest. At the end of a passage she saw a ladder, up which she crawled, and found herself in another long passage. Walking cautiously along, feeling the walls with her hands, she came to a table, and groping anxiously was rewarded by finding a tin candlestick with a new candle in it, and a box of sulphur matches in the big saucer of the candlestick. She now examined a perfect warren of small bedrooms, and could take her choice, as most of them were unoccupied. She selected one of two, in an angle, with a window opening on to the roof. A bed, a chair, a tin basin on a table were furniture enough. The door had a stout bolt and a big key. She discovered one of those cupboards in the wall called a placard, so usual in old French houses, and nearly always papered or painted to resemble the wall. Here she stowed away her bags and her hat, changed her boots for light shoes, and then boldly reconnoitred for water. The dripping from a tap hard by enabled her to fill the tin basin, and soon she was refreshed by scented soap and a thorough hair-brushing. But still, feeling nervous, Miss Pym dared not undress. She lay down on the little bed and fell into a dreamless sleep, awakening some two hours later with a start. The night air came in gentle gusts through the open skylight, the stars burned and vibrated with extraordinary intensity. Miss Pym lay there some time, reviewing the events of the day. Calm and refreshed by sleep, she now began to feel very hungry. Her lunch had been sketchy. A small piece of omelette and a slice of bread could hardly prove satisfying for many hours. Miss Pym decided to go down and forage for herself she ought to pick up some crumbs from von schlange's banquet carefully noting the position of her room she cautiously descended the loud voices the singing and toasting testified to the free flow of champagne in the banqueting hall very red-faced tunics loosened the germans sat at the long table von schlange though very far gone still kept up appearances the pink lieutenant smiling and foolish was pouring champagne into the open mouth of a snoring companion. Captain Wertheim was drinking and weeping. Others were making speeches or crying ha ha at intervals. One man was clumsily dancing. What is that fool doing? shouted von Schlange. Dancing? Germans don't dance without women. Send for those girls. What girls, your excellency? asked the proprietor, trembling for only too well he knew to what girls von Schlange referred. Some fifteen young French maidens, torn from their homes in neighboring villages, and even far beyond, had arrived at Valenciennes that very evening, and were to be packed off to Germany into so-called service, a euphemism for the basest slavery imaginable. The unfortunate girls had been locked up in a room in the hotel, awaiting a troop train which was to leave at dawn m dubois the hotel proprietor stammered and objected that if his excellency meant the children just arrived they were in no state to appear before ces messieurs hold your tongue said von schlange 
slowly and thickly you will be shot if the girls are not here in five minutes a silence fell over the assembly a lot of french girls would make a jolly wind-up of the banquet they are more elegant than russian girls whispered one of the officers from the galician front they came a weeping crowd miss pym stood in the room as they entered clinging to each other children of fourteen fine young girls of seventeen and eighteen their faces convulsed by terror and grief some carried little travelling bags others clutched small bundles all seemed expectant of a terrible fate von schlange rose majestically and pointing to the girls he shouted they are to go out and undress let them return without clothing german officers wish to contemplate beauty unadorned clothed like that ach they are frightful he swayed slightly then sat down suddenly the girls scuttled out of the room like terrified lambs from a slaughter-house and crouched trembling in the passage miss pym followed and resuming visibility approached the children fly mes enfants just as you are fly to your homes and conceal yourselves you who have homes in valenciennes hide for the night those who live in the country i will give those devils something else to think about leading the terrified children to the entrance she saw them scatter in the darkness turning she met the proprietor who are you he asked do you know this means our death yours and mine better so monsieur than the dishonour of all these little ones i am an englishwoman you go away and hide yourself leave me to manage these german brutes they are all so drunk they will forget to-morrow what happened but madame alone with those demons no it is not possible do as i order said miss pym hurriedly and she walked quietly into the banqueting-room von schlange saw her first but realizing he was drunk he thought it must be some hallucination he clutched the table with his hairy paws and swallowed repeatedly miss pym walked straight up to the side of his chair he turned his flat head and their eyes met and the look she gave partly sobered him a curious silence fell on the assembly only broken by the resounding slaps showered on the snake's face miss pym struck hard then snatching up the glass of champagne she smashed it in his face blood and champagne streaming down his uniform the spy the english devil-woman shoot her mein gott i have not my revolver gentlemen shoot shoot yelled von schlange as miss pym flew to the door and extinguished all the electric lights the switches being just outside and in less time than it takes to relate she turned the key on the furious officers seeing monsieur dubois wringing his hands she said monsieur you must deliver them you know whom to thank for this evening's work and if you only assure them that you saw a mad englishwoman rushing out of the hotel and that you tried to seize her they will not shoot you besides monsieur yours is the only good hotel von schlange will not kill you give me time to get away when i have gone open to them go quickly then madame otherwise my doors will be smashed ah mon dieu there go the windows miss pym rushed out returning a few moments later when she had made herself invisible determined to get food somehow she reconnoitred the kitchen and larder where she found the remains of a roast chicken and a little black bread and soon she was scrambling up the ladder to her room taking the precaution to lock and bolt the door in case search were made this fear of being caught in her sleep made her get out her shoulder-bag her hand-bag her jacket and hat all these things she placed on a chair beside the bed and waited some time with a fast beating heart then hearing nothing she stole to the ladder-head and listened and as quietly crept back undressed and slept profoundly and long End of chapter twelve